The purpose of this presentation, the quiddity of balance sheet reconciliations, is to showcase the true essence of balance sheet reconciliations. I will highlight what a balance sheet reconciliation is and what it isn't. I will detail some of the benefits of completing regular balance sheet reconciliations and then define and detail some of the main reconciliations that you will complete. This list is not exhaustive, but serves to provide some guidance on how to prepare meaningful reconciliations. The balance sheet is a reflection of the efficiency of business performance and shows the current financial position of the business, effectively showing how much money would be left over if all assets were sold and all debts were paid. It differs from the profit and loss statement, which reflects the financial performance of the business over a period of time. A balance sheet reconciliation process is the verification that the balance sheet can be relied upon to accurately analyse its performance. As the balance sheet is one of the main tools to analyse the business, reconciliations of these accounts are vitally important. So what is a balance sheet reconciliation, I hear you ask? Well, that's a mighty fine question. Balance sheet reconciliation is a review of balances for reasonableness, not just checking the accuracy of the transaction. It is an analysis of what makes up the balances in each balance sheet account. Any analysis requires critical and curious thinking to be effective. Balance sheet recs show a description of what the balance represents, with action items required regarding the balance, and timing of when the balance will become exhausted. They should always be backed up by supporting documentation, such as bank statements or loan agreements for bank and loan liability reconciliations, or detailed schedules such as for accrual and prepayment accounts. We will discuss accruals and prepayments in more detail shortly. Another question following on from what a balance sheet reconciliation is, is what a balance sheet reconciliation is not. It is not just a list of transactions flowing through the account. Preparing reconciliations like this serves absolutely no purpose and must be avoided. Far too many times in the past I have reviewed balance sheet reconciliations with no idea where the amount came from or where it was going, without having to spend time digging deeper. Any transaction or balance which does not reasonably belong in the balance sheet belongs in the P&L. So what are some of the benefits of preparing regular balance sheet reconciliations? These may include the detection of fraudulent, missing, duplicated or untimely transactions, being able to highlight any failures in internal control processes. Ask yourself, if the transaction doesn't belong here, why is it here? Ensuring timely and accurate payment of superannuation, POIG withholding and the various taxes, helping to avoid penalties for late or incorrect payments, gives an accurate reflection of business performance and position, Reflects amounts owing by and to the business, which allows for more robust analysis and forecasting. It allows for the correct treatment of balances as per accounting standards, where this may be applicable. Some of the main balance sheet reconciliations include bank accounts, prepayments and accruals, debtors and creditors subledgers, regulatory liabilities such as superannuation and taxes, and the inventory. This list is by no means exhaustive as every balance sheet account should be analysed and reconciled. The Almighty Bank Reconciliation. This is the very first balance sheet rec to be finalised each month. It is easily the most important reconciliation as almost every transaction in a business will either begin or end in the bank account. The bank reconciliation should be used to review transactions for reasonableness, not just make it a tick and flick exercise. Even bank makes mistakes at times. Depending on the volume of bank transactions, bank reps should be performed at least weekly. This gives an opportunity to identify any fraudulent activity and highlights any errors in or missed payments, giving an opportunity to rectify quickly. Identifying any errors in entries may help to avoid making duplicate payments. As promised, we will now discuss prepayments and accruals reconciliations. Once bank reconciliations are complete, prepayments and accruals reconciliations should be completed soon after. 
These two balance sheet accounts will determine if there are any amounts to be charged to the profit and loss for the month. Entries here may relate to both revenue and expenses. Prepayment balance sheet accounts may include things like prepaid insurances, prepaid rent or accrued revenue, which is an allowance for revenue in the current month invoiced in the next month. Prepayments reconciliations should include details of the original amounts paid, supplier, invoice number, date and amount, the time frame of the expense, monthly amount to be charged to the profit and loss. The balance here will equal the amount left to charge to the profit and loss in future months. Accrual balance sheet accounts may include things like accrued order fees and electricity or other expenses, which are billed after the service is provided, either quarterly or annually. Providing for staff bonuses is another example. With accrued expenses, you should show the estimate of the amount to be paid in the future, again the time frame of the expense, the monthly amount to be charged to the profit and loss. The balance here will equal the total amount charged to the P&L to date. Where prepayments are generally based on a known amount already paid, accruals will generally be based on assumptions around historical values or estimated future value to be paid. Shown here is an example of a combined prepayment account reconciliation. This shows the period affected, original payment details, amounts expensed to the P&L, opening and closing balances, and most importantly, details of what the transaction relates to, either in the first column or in the comments section. In this example, prepayments and other debtors are held in separate balance sheet accounts. There may be only one prepayment account used for all prepayments in a certain business, However, if the reconciliation is set up in this way, it shouldn't matter. As you can see, the payment details are kept in the reconciliation until the amount is exhausted, which will help to locate the original invoice if required. Similar to the prepayments reconciliations, the accruals reconciliation should include amounts expensed or adjusted to the P&L, details of any payments made, opening and closing balances, and of course, detailed description of the timing of this balance being exhausted. You'll notice that the sections titled Expense to P&L and Invoice Details have been flipped for accruals reconciliations as compared to prepayments reconciliations to reflect the timing of the entries to and from these accounts. This section will give a brief overview of debtors and creditors sub-ledger reconciliations. In any robust accounting system, Debtors and creditors subledgers should never go out of sync with the general ledger control accounts. To prove this point, the subledgers should be compared to the general ledger control accounts each month. Care should be taken to never post entries directly to the general ledger control accounts if the system does actually allow this. Every debtor and creditor transaction should be posted through the subledgers. This includes invoices, payments, and any adjustments. Subledgers should be reviewed periodically to determine that all transactions are still receivable or payable. Any debt or amounts which are unlikely to be collected should be provided for via the doubtful debt provision general ledger account and not through the subledger. Any creditor amounts which are not valid should be reversed via the creditor subledger and not straight to the control account. Regulatory Liabilities Reconciliations Accounts in this category include payroll clearing, superannuation, PAYG withholding, payroll tax, income tax, GST, etc. The periods owing for each type of liability which are still in these accounts should be clearly identified. The exception to this is the payroll clearing account which should be cleared out immediately after the payment is made to employees. If all payments are up to date, these balances should reflect only the last period, monthly, quarterly, etc., to be paid. It is vital that all payments are made before the due dates to avoid any penalties. Any variances between payable amounts and amounts actually paid should be investigated and rectified as a matter of urgency. The Inventory or Stock Reconciliation a tightly controlled stock system is a must for any business holding inventory. If a stock system is used, 
The imagery general ledger should act as a control account for the imagery subledger, similarly to debtors and creditors. Stock counts based on an imagery report should be performed periodically and the value compared against the imagery balance sheet account. Variances highlighted during stock counts should be double checked by a second person and then investigated if still found to be a variance. Variances may highlight any failures in internal control processes and may bring to light potential theft of stock. If you're not completing regular stock takes or reconciling your inventory, stock may simply be walking out the door. And finally, for liquidity of balance sheet reconciliations, you must tell the story. Reconcile your balance sheet accounts in a way that makes sense. Each one tells a different story. Include enough of the right information for reviewers to be comfortable that the balances are accurate and reasonable. Clearly highlight any areas of concern. If there are any areas of concern in any of your reconciliations, make sure to highlight this in the reconciliation and immediately notify the responsible person. This could be duplicate payments to suppliers or significant over or understatement of balances.